When you pick a cow's foot up and it looks like this, it's not a good sign. Especially when she's seriously lame. But at least it's obvious. This is the Hoof GP. So the farm we're at today, we're trimming about 30 cows and only a couple of them are lame. We always get a lame list from farms like this and it's fantastic because sometimes it's not always obvious that a cow is lame because we don't get to see her walking any great distance. And usually, it's in the race behind us. So they're not walking normally anyway. This cow was marked as having a sore left rear foot and it's pretty obvious why that is. This hoof is clearly much bigger than this hoof and that means there's way too much pressure on this. So every time she turns, she's actually ripping away the hoof horn from her foot and that leads to serious complications like this. It's likely this is detached all the way from here, right the way along here and comes out here. Likely, but not a certainty. So let's crack on, get rid of all of this detached hoof and reveal what is lurking below. Actually, just before we start, everybody screams for merch, and they have been doing for months and 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 months. But actually, it's being released today, right now, and when it's gone, it's gone. So if you want merch, if you want hoodies, if you want baseball caps, t-shirts, they are fantastic. This is them here. That's why they've taken so long to come because I wanted them to be absolutely spot on. They're bright colors, they're black, they're white, they're all sorts. It's really, really cool and I love them all. So if you want them, go and get them right now because if you don't, they'll be gone. Anyway, trim the cow. Sometimes problems like this begin to reveal themselves as you thin away the solar hoof horn with the grinder. In this case, that is not the scenario. So it's out with a knife before we do a little modelling on both of the claws, and then we'll move on to that problem area. At this stage in the trim, we really don't know how extensive the cavity, if there is a cavity, actually is. It may cover the entire of the sole of this cow's hoof. It may come to nothing. Okay, I think this goes all the way through here and comes out either here or here, but hopefully not here. Hopefully it's here. Especially on trims like this, I'm in my own little world, just scraping away at the detached hoof horn to see what I find and hoping that it's not all that much. See how much harder this part of the hoof is. Everything else is easy and then you come to this part and you look like your knife's blunt. But actually it's just super, super hard hoof horn. rubbing it to try and agitate that dirt so that I can see more clearly. And spray nice and hard to try and jet it out of the little cavities that are in there. Hey, by the way, when I'm out and about in Edinburgh or Manchester or London or when we're in LA or roundabout home or wherever I am, if you guys see me, come up and say hello because I absolutely love it. So people like Matthew in the garage in Edinburgh the other day and the people down at Garleston, I love it. Even if you flag down my wife in Wigtown because you thought it was me, that's great too. Honestly, never be scared to come up and say hello because I appreciate every single one of you. So yeah, thanks to everybody who does say hello and continue doing it. This is actually looking really good. So I could pick away at this little dark bit here, but there's no point whatsoever. The only benefit it would have would be it would look a little prettier. And as we all know, it doesn't matter how pretty it is, it matters that it's functional. And this is pretty much healed in one little trim. 
We are about to put a block on it, but once that block's on, she's good to go. So let's do that super quickly. When you put on a block, this is no use. This is no use and this is no use. This is perfect. It needs to be flat and level. There's a step here, there's dirt, there's ingrained hoof horn, there's moisture in here, there's undulations here. None of this is any good to stick something to. So we flatten off that claw as little as possible, but as much as needed. And yes, clearly this is not totally perfect, but it's now got a clean surface and much more of a surface area to stick to. Not any glue is perfect. Even Bovibond is not absolutely perfect. Of course it's not. These are animals we're gluing them to. And I always think if we glued a block to my shoulder, how long would it stay there? Actually, okay, that's not a bad idea. Should we do that? It would stay there forever. Do you think? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Nah. Do you think? Yeah. With a cow, there's no chance of it knocking it off because it's sheer power and weight. You're putting a block to your shoulder, it's going nowhere. Check back in a couple of years, guys, that's still going to be sitting there. I forgot this glue, when it, when it goes off, heats up, it's starting to burn my shoulder. Ah! <laughs> the glue, there's a chemical reaction that makes it set and it gets really warm. And normally you just touch it with your hands and it feels a bit warm, but that's actually really hot because it's right against my skin. It'll cool down soon. Okay, all that remains for this cow is to fill this little region up with iodine to allow it to dehydrate and harden up. This hoof really is now a complete non-issue. We won't need to see this cow again. And that's partly why we used a wooden block. It'll wear out or fall off in six to eight weeks by the time that has completely healed. And there is no need to see this cow again for a good few months anyway. That's everything from me right now. Hopefully this block actually does come off at some point. If not, Mrs. HGP is gonna have a broken washing machine. From me, from Craigie Boy, and from the Hoof GP, who is me, I suppose. Bye for now. <laughs>